Hi, I'm JR with Tokyo Filmmaker, and today I'm going to talk about using close-up filters for anamorphic filmmaking. This particular close-up filter is made by Kenko. Uh, it is the MC Close-Up Neo series. And full disclosure, I have done a bit of professional work for the company Kenko Tokina before, uh, and they have actually uh, given me this set of four filters. I get to keep these. So I don't really believe it's possible for me to uh, give a fully unbiased review of Kenko's uh, product specifically. So what I've set out to do for this video is to um, show a very real world situation, an actual short film where I use these filters so you can get a good idea of how close up filters, how this class of product, regardless of the maker, can help you in your anamorphic shooting. I have been interested in anamorphic shooting uh, ever since, oh wow, 2017, 2015, when I filmed uh, a movie called Crawler in the Dark and I used an anamorphic adapter by SLR Magic. Um, now what I have is the Sure uh, 50 millimeter T2.9 anamorphic lens. This has a 1.6 times uh, squeeze factor and it works on full frame cameras. And what I have paired this with is a uh, Panasonic S1H. Now, traditionally, because of their uh, much more complex construction than regular spherical lenses, um, anamorphic lenses traditionally have a pretty poor minimum focus distance. This lens has a minimum focus distance of 0.8 meters or two and a half feet, okay? Which is pretty restrictive, uh, especially considering that this is the only Surrey full frame lens that I have right now. Um, so I have no closer option uh, at my disposal for the film that I wanna create, which will have a lot of close ups. So as soon as the filters arrived, I did a test to demonstrate the minimum focus distance of the Suri lens with first without any close-up filters and then with each of the filters in succession. So you could see exactly how much closer you can get with each one. Okay, so my cool purple backlight has just suddenly died on me, even though it was fully powered uh, by a power delivery device. I'll have to look into to what's going on there later. Um, anyway, um, the close-up filters themselves, okay, uh, are simply labeled number one, number two, number three, and number four. And you know what? It is actually possible to stack these, so I could take the number one and the number four and effectively have a number five, okay? Uh, but Kenko themselves warn that if you do this sort of stacking, um, it, it, will, uh, it will possibly affect the image quality negatively. Um, it also, because you're making such a, a thick filter, um, e e depending on the, um, how wide a lens you're using, you could introduce some pretty heavy vignetting as well. And looking at the test footage that I took, I really didn't see a noticeable difference in image quality just using the individual filters themselves. No stacking, of course. Um, I don't shoot charts. I'm not interested in looking at charts. Uh, I would imagine that uh, there would be a difference in sharpness going from the number one through to the number four, uh, but there was nothing that I could tell just to my own eye. Something I want to address about my test footage is that there does seem to be, in my footage, there seems to be a color shift, starting with the number two and, uh, and continuing on through the three and the four. Um, frankly, 
I think it's my own mistake. I left the camera on auto white balance and as I was uh, getting closer to the subject, there was less actual white in the scene. Um, so I think it actually adjusted. So this was something I was very concerned about. So I decided to do a quick test I did use a different camera and lens. I'm using the Fujifilm X-T4 and I'm using the Tokina uh, 11 to 16 millimeter lens at 16 millimeter because uh, these filters being so thick do vignette at the wider angle. This time I made sure that I took a manual white balance uh, so that that so that the white point would be absolutely consistent. Um, and I'm looking at a white image. So you can see in this difference between the no filter and the number four here. There is no color shift whatsoever. Okay, so I figured it out. It was actually the cable that I was using was not uh, supporting the power delivery to my light. I've got that fixed now. Should be good for the rest of the shoot. So I took the opportunity of having these close-up filters to make an actual short film. Uh, and the challenge was that uh, I would have only the 50 millimeter Surrey lens. I mean, at this time, that is the only lens that they make for uh, the full frame sensor like the S1H. And the, so the idea of having these close-up filters gave me the confidence that uh, I could get all of the close-ups even though even even with a very restricted minimum focus distance It would be possible to get closer for if possible to get tighter shots by just using these close-up filters and In some cases where I had to get extra close. I would even employ the APS-C crop mode What ended up happening is that we actually used the close-up filters for all but two shots and you can pretty much tell that the two widest shots in the film every other shot was taken with one of the filters i'll have a link to the film itself because it did it started this whole concept started out as something very small just a simple scene but as me and the actor save on we got together and we started to to talk about some ideas it actually ballooned into something with a beginning a middle and an end and now we have an entire movie uh to to show everybody so the link to the actual film last role will be available at the end of this video okay but now i just want to show off a couple of the shots filmed with close-up filters and whatnot. So when I was editing the film, I was particularly interested in whether or not uh, there'd be any noticeable difference uh, between the shots without a filter and the shots with a close-up filter. And frankly, there is nothing, again, I, 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 I did not shoot any charts, so I do not know if there's any empirical difference in quality with or without the close-up filters, but there was nothing that affected the final uh, quality of the film. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Okay, so lastly, since we are talking about close-up filters, and I said this is not explicitly a review of, uh, of the Kenko filters, I used one more filter to get a very special shot. In fact, I really, really like this shot in the film. So this shot where you see the actor in the background and the die, uh, the six-sided die, very close, foc close, close 
up to the, the, the lens is, is captured using a special filter called a split field diopter, okay? And this is not a Kenko product. This product, uh, I found this on Amazon from a brand that I've never heard of it before. Um, so I had very low confidence that it would actually work, but I was quite surprised that it did. What we have here is only half a piece of glass. There's actually nothing here. Okay, but on this side here, we have a, a, I think it's about the same as the Kenko number two filter. All right, so we have a fairly powerful close-up filter on one side and no filter on the other side. And that allows us to have two separate focal points, uh, focal fields in the, uh, in the image. Okay, and it is actually something where you can, because it is a circular filter, you can change the angle. All right, not gonna go down the rabbit hole of explaining exactly how to use those, but this is a very uh, popular um, tool for anamorphic filmmaking. Even Hollywood uses them. Um, some of my favorite shots and some of my favorite films are used, have been shot using these uh, split field diopters. Um, but yeah, I was very happy to just throw that into the mix as well and get this, uh, get a shot that really sort of expl expressed how uh, how, 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 how much that little item was, was, was occupying this main character's mind at that moment. So it's a really cool, uh, psychological effect created by this very special filter. Hey, Kenko, if you're listening and I know you are, um, I would love it if you would make uh, a series of these split field diopters. I would, I would buy them immediately. I'll make another film using all of them. <laughs> Let me put it that way. <laughs> If you found this video useful and want to see more like it, please like and subscribe. And please check out the full version of the short film featured in here, Last Roll. Uh, it's kind of a longer short film at 10 minutes. I know that's, uh, that's, that's, that's a little longer than the YouTube algorithm generally works for, uh, but I am a big proponent uh, for the idea that a film should be as long as it needs to be. And this film, just no matter what, because of the rising tension, uh, it needed to be uh, a slightly longer short film. So I hope you'll watch the whole film on its own after this. All right, that's all from me. Thanks so much for watching to the end, and I hope to see you in the next one. Close-up filter googly eyes, googly googly.